Hey everyone, um, just wanted to um, share something with you tonight. Um, well, let me just start here. There's a verse, a particular verse I wanted to read, and I'm gonna I'm gonna wrap the video up with that verse. Okay, here's the deal. Um, my father-in-law is is dying of cancer, and they've given him two to three months to live if he does, doesn't do chemo and nine to 12 months if he does do chemo. Um, and he's been going to this church, particular church for um, a long time. And um, it's a Lutheran church. And the problem is it's the ELCA wing. And I don't know, uh, the split happened, you know, however many long ago, like, Eight years ago whenever it was but the ELCA um, that umbrella of churches that, that fall under it are typically very liberal and um, um, a lot of you know what I would call easy believism you know there's not there's no mention of repentance they take in different parts of the, of the Bible and and discard parts of it and um, they Traditionally and typically have uh, um, practicing homosexuals as um, pastors and they're just very, very unbiblical. And my father-in-law, obviously, um, I'm very concerned that he is saved. Now, I've shared the gospel with him before um, and, you know, wasn't received, you know, that well. Um, I won't get into all that, um, but now it's time is of the essence, you know. And he's there's a pastor that went over to this uh, his house uh, a couple times now, and um, and I found myself thinking, you know, he's looking to this guy for spiritual guidance, and he's trusting in him. But how can this guy impart on him that which he doesn't have? And I don't know. I don't know if he has it or not. I don't know if he's saved. Okay, that's the point. So I, um, so I made an appointment with this guy, this pastor, because I want to make sure my father-in-law is, is hearing sound doctrine, not just um, what, it, what, what the Word calls his itching ears wanting to hear. That, hey, yeah, we're all God's children and see on the other side kind of thing. That's unbiblical. That's, uh, that's silliness. So I wanted to see. I wanted to see um, what this guy was all about. And thank, and I'm, praise God, he, he has a very gentle and respectful conversation. We, we talked for about an hour. And um, in all honesty, um, we did have a good conversation. Um, and I, you know, as expected, I, the guy was kind of light to me on some issues. He really couldn't answer me very biblically when I said, "Well, who goes to hell then?" And but but that's not even the point of the tonight. The point is tonight. I wanted to focus on one question I asked him, and and I'm gonna you're gonna find out toward the end why I think this is such a crucial question. Is I said, "How do you know?" if somebody loves Jesus. And that's what I want to address because I got to thinking this morning and you know, and, and to be honest with you, I wasn't very impressed or happy with his answer. It was kind of a touchy feely, worldly, fleshly kind of do good kind of answer. And that I don't think that's Unique. I think uh, a lot of people answer, "Well, you'll you'll do you'll do good. You'll help people. You know, that's all fine and good." But let's go back further. Let's, yeah, yeah. Good works are great. They're fantastic, and they're the fruit of those that are saved. But you know what? People that aren't saved do good too. So let's really think about this for a minute. How do you know if somebody loves Jesus? And I know there's going to be more ways than what I'm going to talk about here, but I'm going to focus on three. And I'm going to use it in a um, worldly parallel, if you will. Um, 
And this, praise God, this conversation came up with my sister-in-law today at work. And um, now, hopefully she doesn't mind that I use this and now this, share this story with the, with you guys. But anyway, her, her, uh, her husband died a few, uh, I think it's been two years ago now. And, um, but I asked her this question. I go, how do you know somebody loves Jesus? And this is what the Lord gave me as I was talking to her about this. And her husband's name was Vic, by the way. Great man. Fantastic man. Um, and I said, let's say Vic is on the couch when you get home from work. And you walk in and he can't wait to see you. And you just blow right past him in the living room. You don't say a word. You go right to your sewing room and start doing your quilting or whatever, your own thing. And you don't even pay any attention to him for the rest of the night. You don't say a word to him. Is that love? And she said, of course, no, that's not love. Right, because love communicates, right? And in the same way, let's say the weekend comes. The same thing. You just, you're doing your own thing. He's anxious to see what I'm going to do this weekend with my wife. We both have the weekend off. You know, what are we going to do? And you don't, you get up in the morning, you don't say one word to him. you out the door, you go to your quilting shop or you go wherever you're going to go. You do your own thing and you completely blow him off. You have no desire to spend time with him. Is that love? And of course the obvious answer is no. Okay, last part of this analogy. Let's say Vic goes on a six month business trip and Every other day for the entire six months, he's writing letters to you, love letters, and, and and just pours his heart out to you. He misses you. He's sharing what he's doing, the whole thing. Six months later, he comes home, and there on the kitchen counter is all the letters he wrote, unopened, unread, just sitting there collecting dust. Is that love? And the obvious answer is no. Because... To truly love and want to desire a relationship with someone and love them, you'll want to communicate with them, you'll want to spend time with them, you'll want to share them, you'll want to talk about them. And, and, and continuing with our analogy, she would come home from work and she would be ecstatic to see them. They would you know, hug or whatever, good to see you, honey, I'm, you know, how was your day, um, the weekend, I'd spend time together, what should we do, let's go do, you know, and he'd come home from that six-month trip, and not only are the, the letters open, but some of them are tear, they're stained with tears, and they're weathered from the constant opening and closing and putting back in the envelope and reading and rereading and and the battering of that goes along with the continually handling paper, you know, there's that is an indicator of love, and, and so it is with the relationship with Jesus. Do you want to communicate with Him? Do you want to spend time with Him? Do you want to share Him with others? Do you want to talk about Him to others? I mean, if in my and back to the analogy, my when you love your spouse, you want to spend your time with them, you also have, you won't, you won't, be, you won't believe what Vic did today. You, let me tell you what Vic did. Oh, the, me and Vic, me and Vic this. Me, you know, you'd want to share him. Okay, the same it is with Jesus. You'd want to share him with others. You'd want to communicate with him. You'd want to be in his word, his love letters to us. You'd want to spend time with him. That's how you know somebody loves Jesus yes there's more but I think the foundational indicators the fruit of somebody's life that they truly love Jesus is those three things spending time with them communicating with them in his word sharing him okay why is it so crucial that we know if we love Jesus and we know if other people love Jesus. In 1 Corinthians, Paul talks a lot about love. He says, If I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not love, what does he say? Let me go. It's right here. 
Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I have become a sounding, become sounding brass or a clanging cymbal. Without love, he's just an annoyance in our ear. He's nothing. You're nothing. It continues, And though I have the gift of prophecy, I understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith, so I have could not, could, so I, that I could remo remove mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. Paul is hammering home how crucial it is to have love in your life. They're the true love, true love now, not just this artificial fleshly love. And he even gets into it, um, I believe it's in, also in chapter 13, where he defines love. Love is patient, love is, you know, he defines it. So the majority of 1 Corinthians, he's talking about love, but what, how, look at how he wraps it up, the last three verses of first Corinthians he says in verse 22 and this is why the long video about what it really means to love Jesus Christ indicators fruit that indicates that you love the Lord because it says in verse 22 of first Corinthians if anyone does not love the Lord Jesus Christ let him be accursed O Lord come and the Greek word for a curse there is uh, anathema. Sorry, I don't have my glasses on. But, but somebody had told me a couple days ago when we were discussing this that that word literally means condemned to hell. So anybody that does not love the Lord Jesus, let him be condemned to hell, is what Paul says here. So do you love... The Lord Jesus Christ. Do you, is He your Lord or do you just want Him to be your Savior? Because He needs to be your Lord and Savior. And you need to bear fruit showing that you belong to Him and love Him. God bless you all. We'll see you.